Radiance here. In this video, we'll dive into an intriguing topic, creating TypeScript functions that will enhance our code base by generating TypeScript code. If you've ever worked with type generation from a GraphQL or database schema, you'll appreciate the convenience of these auto-generated types. Imagine having to manually write them each time the schema changes. While there might not always be a library tailored to our specific needs, fear not. Crafting our own code generator is straightforward. Rather than addressing a hypothetical issue, I'll guide you through a real use case I encountered. The final demonstration is available on this demo page, and you can access the complete source code in my React Kit repository. You can find all of these resources in the description. Here's the challenge. I ran a productivity app called Increaser. In it, user can set up a public profile that displays their country. We record the country in our database using the ICO standard, which is a two-letter country code. But on the front end, we need a user-friendly way for individuals to select their country. This means having a map that links each country code to its full name. Moreover, we aim to enhance the user interface by showing a country flag next to the user's name. Thus, we need a dynamic React component that can display the correct flag based on the provided country code. We already possess a JSON file containing all the country codes and names, along with a directory filled with SVGs of the country flags. We could directly utilize the JSON, but that wouldn't be that comfortable. Furthermore, while we could host the SVGs on a STN, this approach would compromise the reusability of our component. Why? Because any consumer of the component would then need to be concerned about the hosting location of the SVG. This is where the power of code generation truly shines. Let's tackle the most straightforward task first. We'll transform the JSON file into a TypeScript file. This file should export a record containing all the country codes and names, define a country code type, which will be a union of all the country codes, and offer a list of all these country codes. Given our requirements, the generated TypeScript file will look like this. Our workspace is structured as a mon repo. Within this setup, the country's data resides in the utils package, specifically under the countries directory. The generate country script from the codegen directory produces an index.ts file. To execute this script, we can either use the command npx tsx directly from the terminal or incorporate it into the package.json script section for ease of use. This allows you to simply run yarn generate countries whenever you need to generate or update the country data. In the generate countries file, we read from the countries.json file. This file contains country codes and names and is situated in the same directory as the script. We first organize blocks of code and separate them with two new line characters. The initial block establishes the country name record object as a constant. This subsequent block determines the country code type, and the final block assembles the country codes array. In the end, we invoke the createTS file function tasked with writing the file. The createTS file function is designed for reusability across multiple packages in our mono repo. As a result, we've isolated it within a dedicated package named CodeGen. This function accepts several parameters. Extension specify the file extension defaulting to TS. Directory indicate the directory where the file will be stored. File name name the file. Content outline the content for the file and generated by record the script responsible for generating the file. Upon execution, the function first checks and creates the necessary directory if it's missing. Subsequently, it retrieves the prettier configuration from the project's root to ensure the content is formatted consistently with the existing code base. A comment indicating the source of the generated code is added at the beginning of the file. Ultimately, the content is written into the designated directory. Let's move on to generating components, a task that may seem complex but becomes more manageable when broken down. First, we'll create individual components for each country's flag. Following that, we will design a master component that renders the appropriate flag based on a given country code. Here's an example of the component for the Italian flag. In our system, when creating SVG icon components, we leverage the SVG icon props type from the ReactKit UI icons directory. This type is a modified version of React's SVG props with the ref property excluded. Before diving into the script, it's crucial to understand a foundational function. 
the one that converts an SVG string into a React component string. The heavy lifting within the SVG to React function is primarily executed by the transform function from the SVGR package. However, additional processing is required to finalize the component. Our aim is to set the component size using the font size attribute, which can be inherited from its parent. We also need to ensure that the SVG does not exceed its boundaries, meaning that the larger dimension of the SVG should match the font size. To realize this, we first extract the SVG size from its viewbox attribute. Following that, the normalize to max dimension function from ReactKit helps us to determine the dimensions in EM units. Also, SVGR yields a component. Our goal is to enhance it. We want this component to accept the SVG icon props we've previously discussed. Hence, we utilize a regular expression to isolate the SVG content and then embed it within our customized component. Having established the essential SVG to React function, our attention can now shift to the generate flag script. Situated in the country's coding directory, it bears a resemblance to the generate countries function we explored earlier, but is housed within the UI package. To start, we need to create a mapping between country codes and their associated SVGs. This can be achieved with the make record function from ReactKit. This utility aids in constructing the record by accepting an array of keys and a function which, given a key, outputs its corresponding value. We loop through the country codes and create a component for each. We use the SVG to React function to transform the SVG into a React component. After that, the createS file function writes the component to the file system. Next, we need to create a dynamic component that displays the appropriate flag based on the given country code. This component should have a reference to all country codes and their corresponding components. However, to optimize performance, we shouldn't load every component simultaneously. Using the next dynamic package, we can load them as needed. If a specific flag component isn't immediately available, we'd like to display country flag forward. But here's a challenge. We cannot forward the props passed to the dynamically loaded component to the fallback one. To address this, we leverage React's context. A common scenario in React development is having a provider that only deals with a single value. To simplify this, I've developed a helper named getValueProviderSetup. This utility streamlines the creation of such providers, and you can view it in the ReactKit repository. The fallback component is designed to display the country code centered within a rectangle. This rectangle maintains the same aspect ratio as our flag icon ensuring there is no visual shift or jump when the actual flag loads. Let's circle back to our primary focus, the generate flags script. First, we outline all necessary imports. Subsequently, for each country code, we dynamically generate a component. Finally, we crowd the country flag component, which leverages the country flag fallback props provider to relay the props to our fallback component. To showcase our solution, now, there is a flag page on ReactKit. This page displays a comprehensive list of countries alongside their flags. The top navigation component facilitates switching between viewing flags as SVGs or emojis. View the country codes list to loop through all countries and the country name record assists in displaying each country's name. The match component from ReactKit ensures that the appropriate content is rendered based on the active top selection. To bestow a border radius upon the country flag, we nest it inside the icon wrapper component. This component, a styled span element, is designed to fit its content perfectly and it conceals any overflow. While it might have been simpler to use emojis for flags, they come with design considerations, such as the waving shape on Mac, which may not be suitable for all UIs. For those seeking a flag representation using emojis, the provided function transforms a country code into its corresponding flag emoji. That's all. If you found this code generation journey useful, please like and subscribe. Become an effective 10x programmer with my productivity app at increaser.org.